Since the first IVF baby was born in 1978, over 5 million children have been brought into the world as a result of fertility treatment. In this country, every year, around 10,000 IVF babies are born. Now, in the first part of our fertility series, Stacey Foster looks at the donors allowing people to become parents in ways that a few years ago would have been impossible. Some ladies can't use their own eggs, and mine are kind of just sitting here. I thought, well, why not? It is a huge gift to give to someone, and, you know, it's, it's one of them things that you couldn't put price on. I've got quite a lot of friends that are quite close to me that have had problems conceiving. It's about helping a family to actually become a family. Around 50,000 couples a year resort to fertility treatment after struggling to conceive naturally. Of those, 10% need a donor egg, sperm or both. Many women either go through a premature menopause or as a result of chemotherapy may not be fertile even though they're still in their early 30s. Some women who've suffered from recurrent miscarriage may choose to use donor eggs. We know that there are increasing problems with declining sperm counts. We know that modern lifestyles aren't really conducive to good sperm. After he saw his friend struggling to conceive, Emlyn decided to become a sperm donor with the blessing of his wife and now grown-up children. He knows that as a result of his donations, up to 10 babies have been born. All will share his genetics. Some may even grow to look like him. It doesn't bother me, you know. Um, I don't see them as my children. They are the family's children that have had that child, not mine. Um, I've just helped that family to have that child. Jessica had completed her family in her early 30s and decided to donate her eggs. It's a lot of injections. Um, you have to have counselling, make sure you're in the right frame of mind. It's a long process and one that not many children could understand. But for Jessica, it's important that her son and daughter know exactly what she's doing and why. And then when the eggs are ready, you, you, get, you have a scan and you make sure they're ready. Yeah. And then you have a local anaesthetic time. I've been awake, like semi-awake when, when they take them out, so I'm fully aware of what's going on, but it, it didn't, doesn't hurt. Um, and then you, you just take, they take the eggs out and then you take them to kind of a quiet area so where you can kind of like come around a little bit. We don't know yet if Jessica's donations have resulted in any births and there's only a small amount of information she'll ever be told. The baby that's born as a result of egg donation or sperm donation, for instance, um, if it's told, <laughs> does have the right at the age of 18 to try and make contact with its genetic parent. Um, the donors, on the other hand, can only be told whether a birth resulted what year it was in and whether it was a boy or girl and they'll never be able to, as it were, track down that genetic child of theirs. In the UK, sperm donors must be aged between 18 and 40. Egg donors need to be under the age of 36. Both must be fit and healthy. Their donations can only be used by 10 families. But experts are worried that with the growth of online communities offering cheaper or free sperm, potential parents are putting themselves and the child they so desperately want at risk. If you have the equivalent of a one night stand organised on Facebook, not only have none of those um, screening tests been done, but the man who is the genetic father also can be held responsible for the baby. Two years ago, a national sperm bank was set up with funding from the government to serve fertility clinics across the country and eliminate the use of feral donors. Since then, only eight donors have registered and it can't afford to continue. Doctors at Birmingham Women's Hospital, where it's based, say the national model hasn't worked, but they do have their own sperm donors and supplies suitable for this area. I think to get a sperm donor through the door of the clinic to make that man feel that he can and should turn up, probably needs a more local message. He needs to realise it's a local hospital, it's convenient to him, know the people that will be there so he's comfortable with attending and seeing them. And maybe some of that messaging was slightly lacking in the National Sperm Bank campaign. 
Donors are not allowed to be paid, but those giving through licensed clinics are now eligible for expenses payments of up to £750. It's not about the money, but the thing I'd say is, is it worth the payment or is it worth helping a family? You know, what price do you put on helping a family? I do wonder, but it doesn't bother me if they come banging on my door in 18 years' time to say hello. So, I, you know, it wouldn't bother me. So if they don't, then that's, you know, it's also their choice. The use of donors has more than doubled since 2009. And now more than ever, there's an increasing demand for people willing to give couples the ultimate gift, the possibility of parenthood. Stacey Foster, ITV News.